still the anti-Israel propaganda continues. All one must do is read the New York Times, listen to the BBC, or the early, completely inaccurate reports on the CNN website. The World Health Organization and leaders of Muslim nations around the world condemned Israel on October the 23rd, 2023. They all loudly and categorically accused Israel of launching an attack that struck a hospital in Gaza. It was published that hundreds of innocent Palestinians were murdered by the Jewish bombing of the hospital. There was immediate international outcry against Israel. No surprise. I believe it was intentional. Demonstrations broke out in cities around the world. Pro-Palestinian supporters took to the streets and to social media, condemning Israel and calling free Palestine, kill the Jews. But here's what you need to know. It never happened. It was a lie from Hamas. Yes, there was a hospital in Gaza and a bomb, a missile, did hit the parking lot. The news reported 400, 500 innocent Palestinians were killed in the hospital by the Israeli bombing. However, it was rapidly known. There was not a lot of time delay. Undisputable video proof was immediately available that Israel did not bomb the hospital where allegedly 500 innocent Palestinians were killed. It never happened. It was fake news spread by Hamas and quickly published by their powerful friends in the news media like the New York Times. Instead of bloodthirsty Jews, as the world would have us believe, what really happened was that one of the jihadist terrorist rockets aimed at Israel's civilians misfired and hit the hospital parking lot. By the way, the world knows that as many as one in five of Hamas missiles and rockets misfire and harm their own people. Nobody talks about it. The news won't tell it to you. But that's what is known, the truth, that it was a Hamas rocket that hit the property of the hospital and some people were harmed. That truth wouldn't cause anti-Israel and pro-Palestinian protesters to burn more Israeli flags or to continue taking to the streets. That fake news is what empowers left-wing college professors to continue their anti-Semitic indoctrination of college students. This negligent, unprofessional behavior by the so-called professional news media is why fake news fills the air and social media. But fake news is not new. Propaganda and hate speech cloaked in the passionate words of for the public good have been used as weapons against the innocent for at least 2,000 years. A few Jewish leaders used such propaganda to convince Rome to crucify Jesus. They knew how to populate and manipulate a kangaroo court. They knew how to stir up trouble, gather rabble-rousers, even make up things that would cause some to look at, would look like a mob. They carefully crafted a narrative to turn government leaders against an innocent man because Jesus was guilty of nothing. Similar propaganda campaigns by religious Jews 
were used to arrest and torment early Jewish Christian leaders, like one of the first newly appointed officials of the Jewish church in Jerusalem. Stephen was empowered by the Holy Ghost to do great things, and he did. But similarly to the circumstances experienced by Paul and his friends in Thessalonica, jealousy arose from the synagogue. A few days later, Stephen became the first martyr of the church at the hands of a mob instigated by fake news and propaganda. It is both sad and dangerous that people lack discernment, and it is tragic that acts of hatred and violence can be brought, can be created so easily as a result. We must learn to recognize error and reject it. We must also learn to recognize truth so we can embrace it and support it. I want to look back again to Thessalonica in the book of Acts. After the angry Jews formed a mob and instigated a riot, they immediately directed their hatred of Paul towards Paul's friend, Jason. The mob stormed Jason's house. And Paul happened to not be in the house at that moment. So what the Bible tells us is they dragged Jason and some other believers. They dragged him out to the street and hauled them down to local authorities to be punished. They made false accusations and spewed their own propaganda to the city officials. In spite of the fact that it was the Jews themselves who gathered the mob and started the riot, they blamed Jason and the Jewish Christians for the trouble that had ensued. Their false accusations created the desired effect. Scripture tells us the crowd and the city officials were thrown into turmoil. In that case, law and order prevailed. Instead of a rush to judgment and mob execution of Jason, what the Bible tells us is they made Jason and the others post bond and let them go. There's room for justice. There's room for law and order. It's our friend. It's, it's a friend to the innocent most of the time.